Hey, it's another week, another recipe, and today we are doing a 1940s take on the traditional British dish of bubble and squeak, mainly to see how effective it is at using up leftovers. Come join me. Hey, everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name's Courtney Morris, and I cook history's forgotten recipes out of random cookbooks I find and sometimes websites. Thank you for joining me today. If you are new here, I hope you enjoy the experiment. And feel free to please hit the subscribe button, join our community. We have a lot of fun experimenting on these old recipes. And if you're coming back for more, my utmost thanks for your support. I'm glad you're here and I hope you enjoy what's coming up. All right, so today I am in full force 1940s housewife of trying to make something out of a bunch of stuff I have left over. We're just about the time in our household where it's time to go grocery shopping. And so I have little odds and ends that kind of just either needed to be used up but didn't or we just never got to. For instance, I'm not sure why I bought so many of these. We just didn't use them. But to be fair, the past couple weeks have been a little crazy. So my meal planning and my meal cooking have been like bean burritos. So we are going to put leftovers to the test with a traditionally and stereotypically British dish called Bubble and Squeak, which is a weird name for me to say. It's just not an American thing. But it's been around for a long time. And the reason I chose this one was not only because it's literally a dump meal of a let's find what's ever in the fridge and put it together and hope it tastes good. So from what I understand, you could put just about anything in this as long as there is mashed potato in it. Now by the time the 1940s hit, meat was pretty much out of the picture, unless you had some leftover sausage or even I think I've heard accounts of leftover stew meat. Let's get started. Okay. Okay, so I've never had this before, but from what I understand, it almost is like a, like a potato pancake or a lock kiss or something to that effect, uh, which sounds really good. So I got this recipe from the 1940sexperiment.com. If you have not ever checked them out and you like old recipes, or I shouldn't say old, old, but like wartime recipes, check them out. So all I need is a little bit of margarine, uh, in this case butter, because I still don't have margarine. I keep forgetting. Um, in a skillet and while that heats up i am going to just peel the um, skins off these baked potatoes okay i'm gonna mash these real quick if you are ever looking for some way to use up random items in your fridge go to the 1940s holy crap there's a wealth of something out of nothing kind of recipes because you can add almost anything to this there's not really a set here's what you do first, here's what you do second. It's kind of one of those dump meals uh, that you just kind of use common sense on. So for instance, I have onions and I have mushrooms. I know enough about my taste to where I know that I like them sauteed in things first. I think it brings out a lot of flavor and especially mushrooms. They are nature's little flavor sponges. They will... I'm gonna make a small amount to see if we actually like this. I, if anything, I will eat it. There wasn't really any directions on how much butter or margarine or I guess in case, you know, any fat really uh, you use. It just had a little knob of it. So if you end up using too little, I don't see a problem as to why you couldn't, you know, use more. But the fat is where the flavor is, especially if you don't put meat in this. So don't skimp. Okay, so the recipe said to use cooked carrots. Um, I don't have any leftover cooked carrots, so what I'm going to do is I am going to cheat just a little bit, and I'm going to just chop these up and then stick them in the microwave and make them soft, just so it doesn't take too long to, you know, do its thing. I don't normally like carrots in much, especially, uh, I don't particularly enjoy carrots in much, just because store-bought carrots tend to be very bitter here. Homegrown carrots are lovely and so sweet. And oh, if you have never had a homegrown carrot, you will not understand the reason for all of the old recipes using carrots as a sweetener in recipes. I never understood it until I grew my own and it's night and day. These things are bitter as heck, but useful. I'm gonna put some saran wrap on this and stick it in the microwave for a couple, maybe two, three minutes, just so they are tender. I don't want them mushy, because I don't like mushy vegetables. Okay, I think I made these a little too mushy, but you know what, that's okay. All right, I might be a little carrot heavy. It smells good either way, whatever. 
This has got to be one of the easiest recipes I think I have done so far. It literally is take whatever is in the fridge, dump it in, and cook it together. <laughs> That's it. And while this is cooking, I would like to ask any of you who are watching, I have a little jar of Marmite from the last time I did Bolton Pie, and that's the last time I've used it because I don't know how to use it. So can any of you please comment down below and tell me what to do with it, aside from putting it on toast, because I know that one. It's not a thing here, so I have never run into a recipe unless it is an old British wartime recipe. So that is cooking down nicely, and honestly, it's, it's, it is bright and colorful. It's actually quite fall color-esque. Okay, now this is where the potatoes come in, and Apparently, you just put it in, mix it around, and then you cook it until it is brown on both sides, which sounds absolutely divine. I do love a good latkes. I like hash browns. I like all that sort of stuff. So, you know, maybe there's something to it. So we are. So as far as flavoring goes, we are relying heavily on the margarine butter flavor plus the mushrooms in this case and the onions. And from what I understand, salt and pepper in the 40s was always just on the table and used as needed. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit until one side is, is kind of brownish, and I'm gonna clean up, which, I mean, there's not much to clean up. I really like this recipe. Okay, so this attempt at bubble and squeak got a little bit better. I did press down on it, and the more cabbage I got, the more squeaky it got. Um, I am getting a great brown crust on the bottom, so I'm gonna start flipping it now. Okay, there are so many versions of this going back from, I think, early 1800s, I believe it was, um, and different ways of doing it, and what kind of meat you put in, and I don't think carrots really made an appearance until I think the mid 1800s, and really it did have stew meat and sliced thin beef. I think it's just up to whatever you end up having. Now it didn't become a dump recipe until the 40s it seems because before that it just seemed like this was a, a dish and it was a meat dish and it was something that was actually like you know, put it on the menu and have friends over. Whereas in the 40s, I think it ended up being a, um, hey, what's for dinner? Uh, we don't know whatever is in the pan. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. This is finished. It's got a nice brown crust. It's golden and it smells great. I'm gonna grab my salt and pepper actually. This, this strikes me as something that would be good with a runny egg. Cause I don't know. I like my potatoes with a runny egg a lot of the times. So we will see. Maybe I will modify it. I realize that you probably couldn't afford a runny egg in wartime Britain just for the sake of the ration but so it did brown lovely it's got a nice crust on both sides it's hot uh, it smells very fall and i think that's partly the potato carrot combination but it looks very colorful it smells it smells really hearty it smells really good so maybe marmite would be good in this and, and let's get a bite with just about everything in it i have a feeling i know this is what this is going to taste like because i feel like this is kind of the side for like a roast dinner of potatoes and carrots and onions, <laughs> but it's all mushed together. Maybe this is what, how it happened was somebody had a leftover uh, pot roast dinner and just shoved it all together. Mm. This might seem like bare bones cooking, but the flavor is fantastic. The flavor is so, Good. It's just, it tastes like, it tastes like grandma's cooking. It tastes like down home, homemade, just like stick to your ribs kind of, kind of deal. Now, could it use a little moisture? Yeah, just a little bit, like either a gravy or a sauce or a runny egg perhaps. But I mean, really, honestly, that's so good. Not so good. I can't, I can't help it. I want to try it. So I'm using my egg ration. I'm going to make a runny egg out of it and just plop it on top. And I think it'll be over easy egg is low heat. Teeny little bit of water, maybe a teaspoon. And you cover it. And then you wait until it is as set as you want it to be. 
Obviously, over easy means more running over medium is kind of in the middle, and then over hard is just terrible. All right, we have a done runny egg. That, that is a perfect runny egg, and let's give it a shot. I, I'm kind of a, I am a sucker for this, so yes, I'm using my egg ration. <laughs> mm. The yolk gives it that creaminess, a little more moisture to it, and the flavor is just un unorthodox, probably. Sorry if I offended anybody, but if you haven't tried it with a runny egg, you must know. I am very happy to say that we have another winner in my book. I love this. This is so good and so easy. Okay, I stopped eating that, so I'm going to sign off here. <laughs> If you're still here with me in my kitchen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were inspired. I hope you try it if you haven't. This is really, really good. I mean, you can always look up another recipe too and see just how different people do it and with the meat if you wanted to. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. I would love for you to join the little community. It is growing and it's exciting and I love speaking with you guys. Also, please answer my question about marmot. I really do want to know. And if you, and if you liked what we're doing here and you enjoyed your time in my kitchen with me, please hit the little like button. I think it helps the algorithm get the videos out to more. So it also kind of helps me figure out what kind of content you want. And don't forget to hit the little bell notification that lets you know when I upload, which is every Monday with a new experiment on historical recipes, which is so so much fun and I feel like I've been on a small kick of really, really cool. Thank you so much again for spending a little time with me in my little corner of the internet. And if you need something else to watch after this, go ahead and click here. This is a fantastic recipe that we did the other day and it was superb. I hope you have a great week. I will see you on Monday. Bye!